amount, a, sm a small amount of the, of the liquid containing bacteria and drop it into the next flask. And there were these 12 tribes, 12 um, columns of 12 rows of, of flasks going off into the distance for 20 or 30 years. And what you see under those conditions is evolution. You see that as the generations of flasks go by, and each generation of flasks contains hundreds of generations of bacteria, as the generations of flasks go by, uh, you, you can draw out samples of the bacteria and look at them, and you watch evolution take place before your very eyes. And all sorts of fascinating things emerged. Uh, one was that the, that the 12 tribes all evolved in, in the same general direction, but different in detail. They all got better at uh, surviving and reproducing in this glucose-rich environment, but they did it in different ways. Another beautiful thing about the experiment is that because bacteria can be frozen and then brought back to life after an indefinite period, he could lay down his own fossil record. So at every stage, he could take out a sample of bacteria and deep freeze them. And then he could say much years later, so let's go back and have a look at what it was like in generation 13. Unfreeze them. And then actually compare the ability of generation, say, 20 to run against generation 13. So it's a beautiful experimental system for showing a form of natural selection. It's not artificial selection. It really is natural selection. And it showed all sorts of things. The details are all in the, in the book. I don't think I can go into them now, but um, it, it is a beautiful experiment. Another beautiful experiment involves creatures which are slightly larger, of course, and that is foxes, because uh, the story of dogs is one very close to my heart. They, of course, became domestic, domesticated, not because we domesticated them, but we did a deal. They were with us long before, say, 12,000 years ago, when there were towns or even established places to live. However, one of the experiments that was done in, I think it was Siberia, about 50 years ago, and uh, the re reason I mention that is one of the scientists involved has actually moved to Armadale in New South Wales, uh -huh. where he's a pro <clears throat> professor of biology. And what they did was to select the kind of things that we love in dogs, and that is their playfulness, their friendliness. And tell the story about how many generations it took, remarkably short number of generations, yes, um, to get those characteristics. Well, it, not, not only that. I mean, they, they selected for tameness. These were, these were foxes being bred for, for fur. They were, it was fur, fur farming. And uh, they were breeding for tameness, and they systematically bred for tameness. That means that each, each generation they would look at the litter of cubs and choose those cubs who were tamest according to some criterion. They were most readily approaching humans and so on. And it took, oh, I think only about half a dozen generations before they got fairly dramatic results. And after, again, I don't have the figures, but, but the whole thing only lasted about 30, 40 years. And um, it, they got foxes that were so tame that they were right off the scale of the original wild ones. They scored them for tameness, mm -hmm. and they divided them into very tame, fairly tame, slightly tame, and wild. Um, and um, after a few generations of artificial selection, they had to invent a whole new category, extra tame. I forget exactly what they, what they <laughs> called it. But they also looked like border collies. They had, well, that was the other you know, fascinating blue thing. Eyes and things. Yeah, the fascinating thing was that having bred for tameness, hmm. uh, that then dragged along with it a whole cluster of other characteristics which superficially have nothing to do with tameness but have a lot to do with looking like dogs. So these foxes not only were tame like dogs but they looked like, as Robin says, they looked like border collies. They had patchy bl black and white coats or floppy ears, tails like dogs, a breeding season shifted to be like dogs. And what this is showing, it's, it's well known from other e examples, what it's showing is that when you breed for one thing, inadvertently, without realizing it, you find that you're breeding for a whole lot of other things because there are associations between the effects of genes. And so almost certainly that's what happened with wolves. I mean, dogs, as you know, are descended from wolves and, and no other wild, wild canids. Um, but they were f at first mm. self-selected for tameness, probably, 
probably wolves that were 